Okay, so this video is tying together the water, food, and energy nexus from kind of what the last video was about of each component, but now it's seeing the interconnection of them all. So these are the subtopics for this. So we'll go through national water security, access to safe water, national food security, including food availability, national energy security, including energy pathways and geopolitical issues, the implications of global climate change for the water, food, energy nexus. So the food and the food water okay it keeps going in different orders the food water and energy nexus okay this is from my notes and it's really blurry i don't know why it's so blurry it's more okay it's still blurry it's okay okay so this is a diagram that i got from this source and it's showing food energy and water so let's see how they're all interrelated so ecosystems kind of interlinks them all Okay, but let's go through each one so let's start from food so food to energy land use such as biofuels that kind of goes into energy and then from energy to food we have pro pumping processing and transporting of food and then we go from energy to water we have processing distribution and treatment of water uses energy and then energy uses hydropower cooling of plants Okay, from water to food, there's irrigation going into the food production. Then from food to water, there's the water quality, uh, such as fertilizers, because that can impact the water sources and availability. So they very much all interlink with one another, as you can see by this dual triangle thing. Okay, this is from my notes. Okay, so starting from food, let's start from food again. So food to energy crops are used for biofuel production energy to food large amounts of energy are used in food preparation fertilizer manufacturing harvesting distribution etc okay then we go from energy to water energy is used to extract treat transport and distribute i think water water used in energy production returns to the oh my gosh Returns to the river, I think, warmer than it was. I don't know. Okay, well, it returns warmer than it was. So, returning into the energy. Water used in energy production returns to the river warmer than it was. Then we have from water to food. Food production is the highest consumer of water. Food production impacts water oh my gosh i can't read it i feel like it should be quantity but it says g something water grew i'm gonna go with water quality okay so let's look at national water security and access to safe water so we have to link these to the un sdgs specifically so here we have clean water and sanitation goal six from the sdgs from the un ensure availability and sustainable management for water and sanitation for all so globally 2.6 million billion have gained access to improved drinking water sources since 1990 666 million people are still without specific to india which has quite a large crisis in terms of access to safe water and clean water and sanitation you see these very detrimental statistics so this is showing us the idea of water security um and this is again we we link it to the nexus because okay so here 500 million people are affected by drought that impacts agriculture um because if you need water for agriculture and you don't have it then you don't you lack food and yes and also if you lack water in the average wait what 4% of average global runoff in rivers, very low, can't really see any hydroelectric potential, maybe. So that links to energy. Okay, now we'll look at national food security, including food availability. So again, goal two from the SDGs, zero hunger, why it matters. What's the goal here? To end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Why? Extreme hunger and malnutrition remains a barrier to sustainable development and creates a trap from which people cannot easily escape. 
Hunger and malnutrition mean less productive individuals who are more prone to disease and thus often unable to earn more and improve their livelihoods. There are more than 800 million people who suffer from hunger worldwide, and the vast majority of them are in developing countries. Okay, so that's kind of an overview from the UN about this. Why is it important? I just got interrupted by my mother but okay so so let's link this to agriculture and energy so let me think for a minute okay so as we just mentioned water supply can impact food um, and possibly result in this issue of food insecurity and also having um, energy will also play a role in agriculture because if you don't have sufficient energy you can't have sufficient agricultural systems that you know can provide these mass amounts of food rather than solely like subsistence farming okay national energy security including energy pathways and geopolitical issues so goal seven affordable and clean energy ensure access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all Okay, so this is a bit of a link to COVID. So efforts need scaling up on sustainable, sus- my God, sustainable energy. 789 million people lack electricity. COVID-19 implications. Affordable and reliable energy. <laughs> I can't talk. It is critical for health facilities. One in four not electrify- electrified. Okay. Financial flows to developing countries for renewable energy are increasing. Good, good. Stepped up efforts in renewable energy are needed. Yes, they are needed. Energy efficiency improvement rate for short of 3% target. Okay, so let's think of the implications. Water can be used as a potential renewable energy. So this is good that we are increasing, but we still need more renewable energy, and that includes water use. So water is has huge potential for water product for energy production in many different nations. So taking the advantage of that will achieve will allow them to achieve partial amounts of this goal and then linking to food energy is needed to produce food process food package food store food all of that it's very necessary so providing renewable energy is even better um, because of course it doesn't harm the environment or contribute to climate change okay now we're going to look at implications of global climate change for the nexus so this is a little thing from my notes and it's kind of blurry but it i thought it was helpful to include so let's look at the issues here so for water declining in drinking water because of climate change drought scarcity of water because of drought sewage systems damaged snow melt changes levels change maybe there's more snow melt but then there's less storage um, for future generations and then we'll look at energy there's a need for renewable energy resources because of climate change to reduce the impacts of it nuclear possibilities of energy you know much better for the environment food there's reduced yields more pests planting and harvesting change seasons change decreased arability of land and there's also a risk to fisheries okay now we'll look at the overlap so between energy and water um disruption to the power supply because of climate change extreme weather higher shipping costs possibly because of maybe changing transport routes chain more need um, for storage that might need more cooling more energy higher costs okay between water and food there's increased irrigation which you know dr- it drains the water supply decline in irrigation supplies between food and energy there's coding storing i mean not coding <laughs> cooling storing and transporting and that um kind of is worse and by global climate change because with extreme weather and things you need you possibly need to suddenly change your conditions of storage or your length of storage and things can be disrupted by the unprecedented impacts of climate change then linking all of them is loss of productivity of the food because having to adapt to all these new conditions is very costly and takes time um again here coping costs like i just said damage to infrastructure because of maybe natural disasters again creates huge costs for different businesses involved in this nexus um system okay implications here again 
As population grows, pressures mount, and the relationship between food, water, energy becomes critical. Because of growth in global population and the consumption patterns of an expanding middle class, in less than two decades, three key demands will sharply increase. So here again, very good um, showing of how the middle class is creating pressure on all of these different sources. So demands of larger middle class, increased urbanization, population increase, demand for food is increasing, demand for fresh water is increasing, demand for energy is increasing. Food production requires energy to plant and harvest. Crops are being converted into biofuels in some countries. Food production requires water. Energy intensive desalinization efforts use energy to produce drinkable water. So very much interlinked. Finally, we'll do a little case study. So detailed examples of two countries with contrasting levels of resource security, Nepal and Israel. So what are the threats in Nepal? Landlock, monsoons, political instability, the communist insurgency in the past created quite a bit of tension between different political groups and the government. Inflation of 10.5% in 2018. Women impacted by climate change more than men because of the societal values placed upon them and their kind of role within society economically and agriculturally. Low groundwater recharge of just 40 feet, oh, of 40 feet, so they're getting their water from 40 feet in the ground, but it doesn't recharge very quickly, so that's draining the sources. April, there's, in 2015, there was an earthquake, 9,000 people died, and there's also a huge reliance upon firewood for um, energy sources. So what are the solutions? There's been micro hydro programs, which use kind of biotechnologies to get around the water scarcity and create you know local solutions biogas using manure funded by the wwf they cost less than 600 dollars each 100,000 people use it so very good local strategy not too large scale now they have to import rice however rather than rather than export it as they used to they actually rely on imports because of their food insecurity issues there's also afforestation product projects where two trees are planted for each one that's cut one third of the income from this project goes to the farmers and two thirds go to the program carrying it out okay then we have israel so what are the threats so the main sources of water are the gaza river gaza aquifer and mountain aquifers political tensions palestine palestine conflict conflict um you know that creates difficulties in management arid climate drought reliance on tourism which you know that tourism industry uses a lot of these food water and, and, and energy resources urbanization and population growth solutions to this desalination 40 percent this provided 40 percent of drinking water in 2011 wastewater is being used for agriculture controlled environmental agriculture so vertical farming aquaponics and hydroponics which is covered more in the food and health section um which will come soon solar power is accounts for 10 percent of total energy um, by 2020 and this includes the Ashland project in 2018 which provided energy to 130,000 households.